but he has no idea that she was sent to sleep with him and manipulate him just like his first wife did to find out what his weakness was right and so while they were getting it on she was like ooh la la how are you so strong i really want to know welcome back truth seekers so i have something new for you all today um this is going to be the first video of tea with me c and no i'm not about to drink some tea i actually literally hate tea this is just water however i will be spilling the tea so get your popcorn get your candy get nice and comfy and allow me to tell you a story warning this one's a wild one so I went to do this guy, right? And everybody loved this guy. He was like a miracle child. Like his mom wasn't supposed to be able to have children, but she ended up getting blessed with him. And so she was like determined not to mess him up. So she wouldn't drink alcohol or wine. And like she ate super healthy. And let me tell you, this young man was blessed. Like he's one of those people that you just know God spent a little bit of extra time on. I'm talking like, imagine like a Fabio. So just super good looking, long luscious hair and crazy buff. Like. If you put in your head the strongest powerlifter you know, this man was like a thousand billion times stronger than that. He literally told me one time that he killed a lion with his bare hands and then ate honey out of it. Who does that? But anyway, so this man wanted to marry one of my friends and it was like last minute. So there was only 30 of us there and it wasn't like a normal one day wedding, but they did like a seven day feast wedding thing. I know it's different, but it was cool, right? Anyway, so I'm at the first day of the wedding and we started playing games and the first game we play is a riddle The groom decided to give us a riddle and so this game had a prize where the winner would get 30 new outfits And so literally everybody like desperately wanted to win because 30 new outfits So the groom says the riddle and it was something like out of the eater came forth me and out of the strong came forth sweetness and so everyone starts like throwing out answers and the groom was just like no, that's wrong. That's wrong Nobody was getting it right and so three days of the feast go by and still no one had gotten the answer. So people were getting like super upset. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention that if nobody got the riddle, we had to give the groom 30 new outfits. So anyway, they didn't want that to happen. So like on the third day, my friend comes to me crying, literally bawling because a group of guys went to her and threatened her that if she didn't tell him the answer, they were gonna burn her family's house down over a riddle. And so her soon to be husband hadn't told her the answer because I guess he kind of knew that they would go to her. So I was trying to like calm her down. And I told her like, just go tell your man what's going on. And she was like, I can't, they'll burn down my house if I tell him. But like, I tried to convince her to just trust her man and that, you know, he'd figure out a way because I don't want her to so much trust with her new man, right? But long story short, she didn't listen to me. She didn't trust her man. She instead manipulated him, went to him crying um, and was just like, you don't love me because you won't tell me this answer. So she's just like begging him for the answer for seven days. And he was like, I didn't even tell my parents. Like this has nothing to do with love, but he gives in of course, uh, cause he just felt really bad. And he was like, this is my wife. Why don't I want to trust her? Well, yeah, she runs and tells her family. And at that point I knew the party was over. The groom was literally infuriated because he was like, the only reason y'all even know the answer is because you got it from my wife. So he ends up losing it and killing 30 people at the wedding and then giving their garments that they were wearing to the person who had said the answer. And so after that, he goes to his father's house to like clear his head because he was beyond upset, rightfully so. And so it took him a couple of months to like calm down because his wife literally betrayed him on his wedding day. But anyway, after a couple months, he went back to his wife and he wanted to get it on with her. <laughs> but anyway, the dad was like refusing to let him see her. And he was like, like, what the heck? That's my wife. Like, let me go to her. And the dad told him, look, I genuinely thought you hated her because of what she did to you at the wedding. So I thought you never wanted to see her again. So I let her remarry your friend. But the dad was like still trying to save it. So he was like, just take, you know, my other daughter. She's super pretty as well. And as we know, this groom has a serious temper. So he was like, I don't want the sister. And so he went, caught a bunch of foxes, set them on fire and had them burn down all of the food and vineyards. So the people in the city were like, who the heck did this to our land? And someone told them that it was the groom and they told what had happened and like why he did it. And the people were so angry that they went and killed the daughter, my friend and her father it was devastating it was sad like i understand she messed up but she didn't deserve to die for that like i don't know it was just really messed up so i went and told the groom what happened my mistake i should have known what he would have done he literally goes and kills all of them 
So now you may be wondering, how has this guy not gone to prison, right, for all the killings he's done? Well, if you recall from the beginning of the story, he's crazy strong, like beyond normal, so they couldn't capture him even though they really, really wanted to. As a matter of fact, one time they sent an army to kill him and he killed a thousand of them with a jawbone by himself. And so he was feeling like he was all of that, not remembering like who made him all of that so strong and so mighty, right? So he decides to treat himself by sleeping with some random chick. And so the people got smart and they were like, okay, an army can't destroy this guy, but let's not underestimate the power of a woman because that's clearly his weakness. And so this guy falls in love with this random woman he sees and starts sleeping with her. But he has no idea that she was sent to sleep with him and manipulate him just like his first wife did to find out what his weakness was, right? And so while they were getting it on, she was like, ooh la la, how are you so strong? I really wanna know. And he was like, honestly, if you were to tie me with seven green branches that are wet, I would not be strong anymore. And she was like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. Uh, I'm gonna run and get a snack real quick. And so she runs back to the people who sent her in for the kill and she was like, whoop, whoop, this is what I need. And so she grabs the stuff she needs. She goes back and he's, he's asleep because she took a while. And so she ties the seven things on his hand and has guys hiding in the place that they were sleeping so to capture him. And she yells, they're coming for you. And he immediately wakes up and breaks it. And so she's like, ah, you lied to me. How could you? I thought you loved me. And he was like, oh, you're right, you're right. That was messed up. I'm just messing with you. Like, so he was like, let me be real. If you tie me with ropes that are brand new, I will be stuck like Chuck, no way out. And so this chick does it again. She ties him with brand new ropes and yells, they're coming for you. And he immediately breaks out like nothing. And what's that saying? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So you would think this man would have learned, but no. She goes for a third time and she begs him. And so he tells her, all right, if you nail my hair to the wall, I'll lose my strength. And of course it doesn't work because he lied again. And so at this point she has the manipulation level at like 1000 and she's like threatening to leave him. She's like, you lied to me three times. You made me look like a fool. You don't trust me, blah, blah, blah. So the guy finally gives in because he's like, man, she really wants to know. And so he tells her, if you cut off my hair, I won't be strong anymore. So she gets him to fall asleep in her lap and cuts off his luscious locks. And then she ties him up and she yells, they're coming for you. Sure enough, he wakes up only to find that she cut off his hair and took all his strength. Like, duh, bro, what did you expect? So the people come in, they pay her, and they're gonna take him, but they really don't like him because of all the damage he did to their people. So they poke both of his eyes out. Yeah, and then they throw him into prison and now they're just letting him rot in there. They're making him do all this work and he's just the laughing stock of the town because they captured this great man who had done so much, you know, harm. And so they were just genuinely happy. They were constantly mocking him. So one day they're throwing this huge party and everyone in town is there. And they're like, bring out that guy, like so we can laugh at him and just, they just wanted to mock and relish in his pain, right? So they bring him out and he had been locked up for so long that all his hair had grown back because people don't shave you when you're in prison. Well. I don't know, but he didn't get shaved while he was in prison. Anyway, so he told the guy who was carrying his chains, please take me to the pillar, like I just need to lean on something. And so the guy takes him to the pillars. Mind you, these pillars are what the entire building is standing on, right? And so his strength is back because his hair is back. And so he pushes these pillars down and everybody in the building dies, including him because the building collapses. So he ended up killing more people that day than he did his entire life. I'm telling you. This guy was insane. And that, my friend, is the story of Samson and Delilah. I know, it's a very crazy story, but I think that there's a lot we can learn from it. For one, it doesn't matter how strong you are physically, if you're weak spiritually, you're dying on the vine. And also, I think that this is a great story for God's mercy because even though Samson sinned against God, um, God still let him have one more victory before he died and he didn't have to do that. I encourage you to go read the story of Samson in your own Bible. It's found in Judges chapter 13 um, through 16. I hope that you enjoyed this story time. If you have any specific Bible stories that you would like me to do, drop a comment below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I hope you all have a blessed and wonderful day. Bye!